Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Yeah. Mm. Welcome into the show. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you for Tuesday, June 16th. The year is 2020. That it is. Still 2020. Still 2020. It's It's been good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are we are still with you, and we are still looking forward to maybe a different, but a very exciting fantasy football season. And there'll be twists and there'll be turns, but we'll be with you each and every day. Welcome in if you're brand new. Excited to have you with us. If you yes, have I'd not listened to the show, have a seat. Yeah, take, enjoy. Take, take a seat. We will move. Put for, your feet up. You could do that. Yeah. Get comfortable. Mm. Lay back. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been with us before, we go to three shows a week in July, which is not far away. Oh I my mean, goodness! What? Yeah, it's almost here, Mike. So uh, we'll be three a week okay. in July, and then we're a five days a week show from August through December. So the entirety of the football season leading up to it, the draft season, fantasy drafts, that is. And uh, you even get an extra episode if you are with us on jointhefoot.com. So, yeah, I, I agree with Mike. Put your feet up. Get comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun year. We got news to talk about today. The main event on the show is a mock draft. We'll be drafting from the 12th spot. That was decided moments before the show. Yeah, much to my chagrin. Who wants to draft at the 12 spot? It's not usually people's preferred. No, but place. that's why that's why we do it. That's we're we're because you might draw the 12 spot in your draft and you need to know what do you, what do you do down there when you don't get any of those superstars at the top of the first. And depending on how today goes, we'll either prescribe our technique or or you know, yeah. decry it. Say it's no good. <laughs> we don't know how it's going to turn out. I have to try to come to common ground with you guys on these picks. Which is why I think it'll turn out pretty good. <laughs> You're probably right. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com, launching a new website very soon. Not sure I've said that to our non-patrons before, but we do have a new site coming out. Uh, upgraded online experience for the UDK. Everything's better. Everything is better. Your mobile, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, look, it, it is 2020. Mobile use is 70% of the website. I hear people use phones, <laughs> yeah, the mobile these, phone. These phones, they're they're just so new and hot. The the, the way you can do things on the internet. They're right smart. They're from smart. From your pocket. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the mobile experience is so much better, and, and we're very, very excited for it. Yeah, so that's coming soon. You get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com, and we're still giving away that Devontae Adams signed jersey at footclangiveaway.com. You can get in on that. It's a nice jersey. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Quick question before we get into the Very news. Very packery. Yeah. Everybody is hyped for rookies. This is the quick question of the day from Twitter. Are there any sophomores that you are targeting for cheap? Oh, yeah. That's how you get it done. Yeah. This one's actually tough because we had so many... Perhaps not a full breakout campaign for a lot of these rookies, but you had a lot of rookies where you're looking at them and they're going to be, they will be drafted with with substantial draft capital in in 2020. Like Deontay Johnson, he's not cheap anymore. Terry McLaurin, mm -mm. Uh, he he hasn't been cheap since Hollywood. Halfway through. Hollywood still seems yes, that's the number. Hollywood, one. See, I, he I, seems I, discounted. I, I am, feel like you can't get him for cheap. Well, uh, you might not not be in able a draft to. with Jason. You might not be able to. It really depends on on the owner. But he is definitely a player that he did not do enough in his rookie season to make it to where everyone who has Hollywood Brown 
is thrilled and expecting a, a super bright future. I know that I personally expect a brighter future than you two gentlemen do, um, especially this season. So he would be my number one target. I, when I looked at the list of players, there are three names that I actively already have tried to target this off season um, that were rookies last year. All three names are Rodney Anderson, just for the record. That's one of them. <laughs> Uh, that's that's my third throw that's in. Re- that's really a name on your list. I literally traded for I him this morning. Yes. Yeah, but but anybody can do that. Yes, because it doesn't take easy. anything. No, Brian Hill is what it took me. So, um, look, I thought Ro- you were joking. Though. Rodney Anderson is is mostly a joke. He's you know the fourth string coming off of the second ACL, it's a solid fourth point. season ending injury in five years, which is incredible work, Rodney. Um, but yes, outside of him. The two other guys are Marquise Hollywood Brown, who I love, mm-hmm. and McCole Hardman, who I still think is is absolutely. I think you can get him at, at for less than Hollywood Brown. He is in a situation where I believe he can do more than we expect because, look, Sammy Watkins is the guy he has to beat out, and Sammy Watkins has never really showed his dominant form, if you will, his his lizard his King final form. form. Um, <laughs> so I, I like I like Hardman as a as a cheap target. I like Brown, uh, Hollywood Brown as an expensive target. And if you want an a throwaway last guy on your bench dart throw, that's Rodney Anderson to me hmm. because he uh, is great on a dynasty bench. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're not, not drafting a real him in bench. redraft. I mean, goodness no. gracious! Oh, no. All right. All right. Uh, I will bring up Josh Jacobs' name because the. What qualifies as getting a player cheap is different in the first and second round than it is in the later rounds. So a player like Josh Jacobs, who is drafted as the RB9 or 10 off the board, you know, on my rankings, he's the RB6. He might be higher on, on I don't remember if you guys have him that high, but you're looking for the next Dalvin Cook type of season. You're looking at the player that you can get a little bit lower down in the first round, early second round. That could be a top five, top six guy. I think that's Josh Jacobs this year. He fits that sophomore qualifier so i wanted to bring his name up mike do you have some names that you i was just looking through the list of of second year players who because uh, i was taking the uh, the context of the question in dynasty yes and i players, was as well players that i can draft or trade for uh and, and not have to break the budget give up a bunch of picks but interesting players uh we all know who he is but i still think that you could get him for a, a pretty discounted rate but it's darius slayton from from the New York Giants, who is he is a he is an interesting player who flashed really big playability, but was not consistent at all. But he was a rookie after all, and then a player that I think is worth the stash. I mean, this could absolutely flame out immediately, but Stephen Sims from Washington is interesting. The same as 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 Darius as as Slayton showed the big playability. You have his teammate Terry McLaurin talking him up, saying, I, "I'm seeing something different this off season." Uh, from and opportunity, and so opportun- much opportunity. Like, who's the, who are the wide receivers for Washington? You just named both of them: <laughs> Terry McLaurin and I, Steven I like yeah, Trey, Trey Quinn. I like Gandy Golden, uh, the kid who they drafted this year. But Steven Sims is on the team, and he made plays last year over and over yeah, again. So he, I think you could, you could trade like maybe even a third rounder. Right now for Steven Sims and see if it works out. Okay, let me throw two other names out real quick just to see if you guys are interested because these are guys you could get way cheaper than last year because if he they... says Rodney Anderson again. I swear, <laughs> <I'm just> gonna... <laughs> he's my new carry on. Uh, off to injured. Um, Nikhil Harry and Damian Harris. Sure, two sure n- Patriots. Uh, you know rookies last year who both were completely worthless for the most part. I mean, Nikhil Harry due well, to Damian injury. Harris Damian was. Harris got like two carries in the season. Um, obviously, Sony Michelle, we're going to talk about that in a minute. He's coming off another uh, injury, another surgery. So would you try to buy either of those guys cheap in hopes that it could be bright, even though the Patriots offense looks terrible? I just don't think you can get Nikhil Harry as cheap as you would need to because yeah. of the fact that the, the draft capital invested in him in Dynasty Leagues last year was the number one pick or the number two pick. And those guys rarely lose that Value that much value in one off season, even if they had. It feels a bad like Corey year. Davis. Like if you right. tried to get Corey Davis in his sophomore year, you would have paid less than his rookie year, but 
but you still would have had to pay too much. Mm-hmm. And it's and I like Nikhil Harry, but the opportunity is just not plain. It's not before my eyes to where I know he's going to be productive eventually. But Damian Harris is at least interesting. He was a third round pick. Am I remembering that right? I believe Dave, that is correct. I'll he was a third that. round pick, so it's a day two pick on a running for a running back for the Patriots. And we don't know what the future for Sony Michelle is. It it's not it's not looking bright. I should say if, if when you see him on the field, his he on draft day, if you remember, he was going to tumble in the draft because of worries about a degenerative knee problem. We're seeing the the degenerative knee play out for Todd Gurley already. It seems like Sony Michelle might even be at a more advanced uh, place in that that knee falling apart than even Todd Gurley is. And who who else is who, who's there? James White, he's locked in. But then you're talking Rex Burkhead or Damian Harris. I mean, who's really going to get the opportunity? Well, and and my problem with Damian Harris and and he he's more valuable than Rodney Anderson. Let's put it that way, from a projection standpoint. All right, but. We've been down the road. I'm looking at history to be my example on projecting the running backs in New England. Harris may have value, but how much value will he have? That is the kind of question mark. Yeah, it's unknown. And it's just, I we've been down this road with uh, undrafted free agents in the running back room in New England in years past that pop in the preseason, that never see a great opportunity. It just hasn't been viable to start a Patriot running back consistently outside of James White with the Brady connection. In a really long time. So, you know, you have to overcome last year's injury, earn the trust of Bill Belichick, then earn a big enough role. Then it, maybe get yeah. the backup job for a bad offense. Yeah, it just feels like too many steps away from success. I'm not saying you can't spend, you know, you don't have to pay for him in a dynasty league to throw him on your bench. That's fine. But it just feels like a long walk. But for the record, still better than Rodney Anderson. For the record, a much better prospect, <laughs> without question. Come on, Rodney. News and notes from around the league. I just don't see the pathway, Jason Moore. Well, the pathway is a mix and holdout. Yeah, which is a pathway for maybe a few weeks or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. So you get a couple weeks of him being the third string. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. All I know is whenever there's any good news on Rodney Anderson, my my Twitter gets flooded. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> don't use that as your, as your gauge. Oh. Uh, ESPN, th- this is the news that Mike alluded to. Sonny Michelle's recovering from foot surgery. It was reported as a uh, a discomfort issue, so he got it taken care of. Never great to have surgery, from what I understand. But I guess if he was experiencing discomfort, maybe it's good that he took care of it. Maybe. Uh, Henry Ruggs, there was news on the thigh injury that he suffered. He was in the hospital. I had a source reach out to me and say, like, you know, look, he had a pretty big gash on his thigh. But the news report coming out now is that he's expected to be ready for training camp. This is the first round rookie wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders, Henry Ruggs. Speedster. Kind of need your legs for that. Yep. Injured last month when he got pinned between a trailer and a car when helping a friend move. My goodness, that man. That sounds, sounds terrifying. A- accidents happen. Got stitches in his thigh. No muscular damage expected to be ready. That is the current report. Yeah, the whole expected to be ready is just like worrisome verbiage because it, you know what I mean? They're like they're, that insinuates that, well, maybe, may, you know, hopefully he should be ready. And, but if there's no damage, wouldn't that just be it's like, expected. yeah, he's good to go. It's expected. He'll be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Still recovering is what that means. That's that, exactly, the translation. Exactly. Still recovering from something because he isn't ready yet. He's expected to be Jay. That's, that's my point. It's good sounding verbiage that scares me, but at the same time, we're very far away. And if there was no muscle damage, he should be okay. Uh, the NFL has officially canceled mandatory mini camps and extended the virtual offseason program through June 26th. In conjunction with that, we had re- a report about four total Cowboys and Texans testing positive for COVID-19. One of those, Ezekiel Elliott. Reportedly. Reportedly. Uh, that's on Pro Football Talk is reporting Zeke tested positive. This sp- it brings about a bigger discussion on COVID-19. Mm-hmm. The NFL the projected season, like I said, there'll be twists and turns this year. But that means your fantasy team is going to have to have different expectations and maybe even different settings for your league to accommodate the challenges that COVID might bring to the NFL because we know there will be testing. We know there will be precautions. There'll be health protocols agreed to by the NFL and the NFLPA. 
but there can still be positive cases as seen here. There still we, will we be. Know. We know. That's yes. the thing. We know there will be positive cases of COVID-19 throughout the football season. And this is a great time to be uh, kind of thinking about that. If you're a fantasy football commissioner, we've been asked many times, how does it impact your rankings? How are you looking at, at guys? But it impacts your leagues. We, we are big proponents of having two IR spots on your roster so you're not up against you're not making this these really bad decisions because you got hit with a slew of of injuries where and 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 it happens sometimes you don't need to but but very often you'll have a situation where you will you'll have three to four injured players on your team and you're really glad you have the ir spot that you don't have to drop a very valuable fantasy player now if the protocol stays that a if a player tests positive for COVID nineteen, now you're talking they're gone for two weeks. I mean, you got to have these IR spots ready in for your fantasy football leagues. You don't want like, COVID's already doing enough terrible things in, in the world. We don't need it in, in, in impacting if you have to drop a fantasy player for no good reason. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a challenge because when I. You know, you do the trickle down effect of what happens with the positive test in season. Well, these players, who are they around? They're only around their teammates. So it's like one or two positive cases. Does that become 10 or 11 positive cases? Does yeah. that affect games we, being yeah. canceled? We don't know how that will work, but accommodating potential loss of players for a period of time. And I guess the inverse, something that Jason mentioned right before the show started if Zeke has it and he beats it, like Von Miller did, then he's likely immune to it yeah does he have the antibodies Th then then he's, not a doctor then he's likely a more sure piece i mean in some capacity than another player that could still get it and go out it's just a really weird <laughs> dynamic it's, it's, to think this, about. this is going to be yes. a, a very interesting fantasy football season and it, it might even affect i mean we're doing a mock draft today it might affect when you look at some of your later round picks do you instead of swinging for the fences as is usual with those later picks if there's a solid bench asset. Is it better to have that depth? This One like year? like backup running backs. So I mean, you use the example. Some maybe Zeke does have antibodies and and he's uh, immune to the disease now. We do, we're not hundred percent sure yet. But like backup running backs, like to, Tony Pollard. Do you all of a sudden move him up your rankings because you need to have these guys? Like we we we, we don't handcuff in the draft season. Because it's it's a waste. You're not sure you're going to get the guy right. Well, and you're not but do you need to consider it now? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> because that, that feels more like playing the lottery at that point. Because you've got so many players. You're not handcuffing on like, I don't I don't know what one play. Do, do you handcuff all players in certain states? No. no but what I mean is, <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah. I guess I mean, let, me, let me narrow it down more. High value backup running backs who you... So you're you are, telling me Chase Edmonds. Oh, like you're that's just saying, I mean. going up you're the You're saying board. because there's a global higher risk to all players. Yes. So then the high value backups have maybe a slightly higher value because some players might miss games. Exactly. Because you, there, there are some backup running backs like Tony Pollard or Chase Edmonds. Like you know, and Kareem Hunt, but we've talked about how he has standalone value. You know that if they are given the starting job, what it means, they're going to be great for yeah. fantasy football. So do you move them from a early double digit round pick to all of a sudden you're in the seventh round going uh, maybe a ask I'm me again in two weeks mike <laughs> ask me again in a couple of weeks when let's see this yeah. is a good this is a good reminder though we we're talking about your league uh, creation your format you know adding ir spots things like that it also affects uh your draft date you know we oh, usually gosh, do yeah. our draft day after the third week of preseason games which sure. now might be that first preseason game they're they're still toiling with that but putting it later into the preseason gives you a little bit more information these players are going to be in a in a real uh you know environment next to each other around each other prior to those drafts you're going to see is this catching is this worrisome should i draft more depth as opposed to if you if you have your draft too early you won't have some of that information to make your draft decisions yeah. so so in summation before we move on to the mock draft this year's going to be weird in some way shape or form and so you're going to have to adjust as a fantasy player yep. individually or as a commissioner to what's happening. Yep. Before we move on to the mock draft, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. And listen up. We have a new Manscaped product alert. They have released the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair 
trimmer. My nose hairs have been whacked. What nose hairs, Mike? Thank you, Jason. Thank you for correcting me. I gifted our fine producer, Judge Giamatti, with a weed whacker. So he's in Well, it was about time. Yeah, we've been real irritated with those (laughs) the nasal protrusions. But the weed whacker is great. It provides proprietary skin safe technology to prevent nicks, snags, tugs. It's it's this thing is high powered, nine thousand RPM motor powered, three hundred sixty degree rotary dual blade system. It's waterproof. Look, you want to take care of those nose hairs in the shower? Well, you you can do that. You also get a re, you get a, can get a replaceable blade every three months to keep the weed whacking time clean and enjoyable. Look, it nose hairs are they're gross, guys. They're I, I hate. I, I hope this is not breaking news for people. Do, 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 no, I, and it just keep, they just grow faster now that I'm older. Yeah, they, they do. I've got a weed wagger. I love it. It handles the job. And right now, you can get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code Footballers WW. So standing for weed wagger there at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use the code Footballers WW. Check it out. And Foot Clan. This week is Father's Day, and Omaha Steaks has a limited-time Father's Day offer. And guess what they are giving our listeners off on their deal? What's that, Jay? They're giving them 55% off. 55! Oh, yeah. For $79.99, your gift will include four naturally lean top sirloin steaks, hand-carved and aged at least 21 days for tenderness and flavor, Mm -hmm. four premium boneless chicken breasts, four gourmet Mm -hmm. jumbo franks, and kielbasa sausages. Mm. I have not yet had the pleasure of uh, having the kielbasa sausage, which I love, from Omaha. Mm -hmm. Uh, You will receive a package of uh, the all-beef meatballs, four perfectly brown potatoes au gratin, four of my favorite made from scratch caramel apple tartlets, and an Omaha Steaks signature seasoning packet. Dad will get all of this, all this delicious food, plus a free pound of steak cut bacon, okay, and all this to Dad's door on Father's Day for $79.99. Don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com, and you type footballers in the search bar in order to get the summer sizzle pack for Father's Day today. Mm. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right. It's time for a mock draft, gentlemen. (laughs) Drafting from the 12 spot, 12 team league, half PPR. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun uh, experiment. (laughs) Box drafts are always fun. Yeah, they're great. And uh, just so you know, we, we mock draft with different platforms at different times. What we try to pay attention to is the most up-to-date and accurate ADP. So when we are auditing whatever platform we're mock drafting from, when we do these shows, we just want you to have the most accurate information. We don't want you to be dealt a, a different expectation in these mock drafts than what you would see in a regular draft. So. As much as I want to draft Christian McCaffrey in the third round, yeah, I, that's I, not very helpful. No, no. So we're drafting from the 12 spot. Let's do it. All right. All right. Number one off the board, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, number two. Michael Thomas went 103. It's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott at 104. Dalvin Cook at 105 still. Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon, Tyreek Hill, and then Lamar Jackson at, oh, man. at 111. Oh, man. Which I believe many of you will see in Someone's your draft. Yes. Feisty. Yes. Uh, I, I think that he won enough championships for people last year that when you're at the back of the first round, people are going to be getting that itch. That will That's way too high, I think, for, for me. You're still talking about the, the top 10, 12, uh, 15 players off the board to take a quarterback. That is That's tough. And here we are at uh, the turn. We've got two picks back-to-back. And when you talk about Lamar Jackson, these are some other players that are still on the board, even though he's off the board. Julio Jones, still on the board in the first round. Nick Chubb, DeAndre Hopkins, Chris Godwin. So, uh, you know, looking at the wide receiver positions, you have Evans, you got Galladay. You still have Josh Jacobs, who I mentioned earlier, on the board. What are you guys thinking here at the turn? What is the strategy decision that uh, you're having to make at the turn that you wouldn't have to make in the middle of the 
of the round. Well, when you're at the turn, sometimes the strategy strategy decision is going to be uh, it's going to be the question of positional, right? Do you want to go running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, running back, wide receiver? I I don't think there is a right answer, but I know for from my experience when I've been at the turn, especially the first turn, I prefer grabbing different positions. I because it's so long before you pick again, and so many players are off the board since you're going two full rounds essentially until you get to pick again. If you go running back, running back, or wide receiver, wide receiver, which the value might say that's great here, it kind of forces you to take that other position or need that other position two rounds from now. But if the board or if the draft falls poorly it for that pigeonholes you, you're saying exactly. So yeah, which is tough because I, I'm sitting here looking at these picks and saying, man, I'd love to have you know Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake or Josh Jacobs and Nick Chubb. And then I, I'd be content with, you know, Calvin Ridley and Robert Woods as my two wide receivers if it dropped that way. Mm -hmm. But I sure as heck would be committed to that. I would be committed to the wide receiver position. Mike, do you have uh, somebody you want to lock in here? It, it's it's tough right here because you're looking like Julio Jones is a is a top tier wide receiver. I still have Chris Godwin ranked very high, but I understand the the concerns and the variables with him, with, with Tom Brady and, the, and things moving around. Meanwhile, at the running back position, it's it's not at the top tier where you right. could get Julio Jones, who is a I mean he's a tier one type of guy. But what I have found so far are the wide receivers available to me in the back of the third or in the fourth round having so much value to me that I prefer right now starting running back, running back. Interesting. So we got to come to a conclusion here. I thought you were going to lock in Julio, and I thought that would be where we'd go with one of these two picks. I'm fine going Julio. What but. what running back do you like the most right here? Let's ask that question. Oof. Is it Nick Chubb? Is it Josh Jacobs? It's Josh Jacobs to me. I would go Josh Jacobs personally, then Kenyon Drake, then Nick Chubb. Um, I so Yeah, and we might dispute that order a little bit, but not the liking of Josh Jacobs. So I would go Jacobs, Julio here. That would be the two picks that I would take. If, I would, if this was if this was my draft and this was real, those would absolutely be the the two players I would take as well. You do go Jacobs and Julio. Jacobs and Julio. I yeah. think that's what. Is we, it because you just need all the J's? That's on your right. Team? I am Jason. I want Jacobs. I want. Who do you want to give the Julio. honor? Of, yeah, Julio's his name. Who who do you want to give the honor of the first round draft? I mean, we're back uh, to that. Okay. You got to give it to Julio. I, obviously, mm. it doesn't make a difference, but he's in. The, you know, he is a higher tier. All within right. his position. Whether Mike Respect was, the man. Whether Mike was comfortable with it or not, since we fine. both agreed perfectly, Josh Jacobs, Julio Jones, we're locked into the Jays, obviously. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, a, a really nice start. Um, well, and we can test it out, right? We can look now and say, what if we had gone running back, running back? What wide receivers would we be forced into taking here? Sure. Or, you know? So we went uh, Julio Jones, Josh Jacobs. After Jacobs went Hopkins, then Chubb, Mahomes in the second round. Chris Godwin dropping to 205. Mm. Aaron Jones, Kenyon Drake, Miles Sanders, Mike Evans, Austin Eckler at Whoa, 210. Goodness. I uh, would have taken him. Kenny, I would have considered him with the 201. Kenny Galladay, Travis insane. Kelsey. So Kelsey goes at 212. That's a player I like to pay attention to where they go in mock drafts um, because it was too soon for me where we were drafting. But I was, uh, I was, my eyes glanced his I, direction. I did as well. If you're getting him basically at the third round, I mean the two twelve, I think that's great value for for Travis Kelsey. And then uh, third round, o Odell Beckham, Fournette, Kittle, Cooper, Clyde Edwards-Helaire at three hundred five. Another player we're monitoring and watching in mock drafts. Where does the hype train go with Clyde Edwards-Helaire? It only goes up. It's not going. Are down. you comfortable with third uh, third round? No, I'm. I'm not. Uh, you know, look. Well, he's I, drafted ahead of Gurley here. Gurley went after him. I would take him before Gurley. I. I probably would as well. But I'm. I'm not into redraft Clyde Edwards Alaire. I. I want him price, this year. At the price. Yeah, at yeah. the price. It's just if he gets off to a slow start, I would much rather make a move for him after a couple weeks than draft him. After Clyde Edwards Alaire, Gurley, Thielen, Allen Robinson, Juju, three hundred nine. We'll be curious. I'll, I'll be curious where Juju ends up when all is said and done draft wise. Cooper Cup, Melvin Gordon at three eleven. We're back on the clock with two picks. Let me give you a lay of the land at wide receiver. You have DJ Moore, you mm. have AJ Brown, you have mm. Calvin Ridley, you have Robert Woods. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I was pretty sure Ridley and Woods would still be here, you know, and maybe that's kind of analyzing the draft and saying, well, would you have been happier taking another running back and then going, you know, Ridley and Woods? I don't know. Julio's pretty great. So I feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, look, that, that was my question, right? Is, okay, Mike talked about he really likes the value of wide receivers around here. And I totally see why, because the wide receivers here are fantastic. And who, if were, you, who was the other running back we might have taken? Chubb or Kenyon Drake? Yeah, okay, Drake. Yeah. So would you have rather had, uh, you know, let's say Drake or, or Chubb, you, whoever you prefer, sure, um, or Julio? When when you could talk about to me, uh, DJ Moore being here, he is phenomenal. Um, Mike, I know you're all in. You've been yeah. Mr. DJ Moore. Where do you stand on the value of DJ Moore, Andy? Because I I have him more like Mike as a you know, a, a very high end fantasy asset this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I like DJ Moore, AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley, Robert Woods. I'm not positive. I would, I, I would probably take Robert Woods over DJ Moore if it's my own draft to myself. Sure. Uh, but we're we got two picks here, so we, you know, Chris Carson still on the board at running back, Lev Bell. You, you get into this like pool of of maybe disappointment running back group. With Lev Bell, James Conner, David Johnson, David Montgomery, all four of those guys have a little bit of stink mm -hmm. in their shoes. Um, Mark Ingram's still there. We we talked about him dropping. Does he drop to our next pick? Probably not. Yeah, usually, here's one of the things you have to be aware of when you're doing a draft at the turn. Whoever you're hoping <laughs> makes it to the next pick. It's going to be a long wait. Always assume they don't. Like, literally, you can't play the ADP game when you're at the turn. That's something that has, you know, it took me years to finally accept. I'm Because that's one of the things I do the most at drafts. As I play the ADP game, who do I think will fall to the next pick? Don't do that. Get the guys you want. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to end up at the turn taking players a little bit sooner than you want to. Yeah, reach, or not getting them. Reach those for are who the you choices. believe in or don't get them. That's exactly right. So I'm, I'm happy to lock DJ Moore in. If you guys both like DJ Moore than, DJ Moore more, than Robert Woods, I do. Uh, it's they're very close. So right now in my projections, I'm I'm very bullish. I have DJ Moore ranked at number six, but I have Robert Woods at ten. So th these aren't. Is huge there any world you take both of those players here? Because you're in a flex, you're in a half PPR. If you thought that you could get a player like let's say like Raheem Mostert, or maybe somebody like Montgomery or Ingram slips to our next pick. No. Is the tier break big enough? Yeah, that that I don't want my RB two to be someone. That, Do you feel like it's that much of a lock though that Chris Carson offers you a tier difference than David Montgomery? I don't. I don't think David Montgomery will be there in you know twenty four more picks. Is my point. I think the tier break to the next pick. If we were to go wide receiver, yeah, wide if you receiver, end up with Devin Singletary or DeAndre be, Swift, or I, I don't want that be a for problem. my running back too. And looking backwards, hindsight, and that's the point of mock drafts. I would have preferred to take Kenyon Drake or Nick Chubb, lose Julio, and, then and go, instead go DJ Moore and Robert Woods. Yeah, yeah. I, I would rather have that four pack. So That's Mike, the fun of the turn. Enjoy kudo, it. Kudos to you on on that call. Um, Do you like Carson or Lev Bell more as your RB two on a team with Josh Jacobs? <laughs> I prefer it sucks. Chris Carson's injury sucks, man. We know he's going to be the starter. This should be easy. It should easily be Chris Carson. I think it is Chris Carson for me. I was going to say it is easy to me, uh, but right. the hesitation is because of the injury. So I'll we, lock DJ Moore in. Yeah, I think okay. DJ Moore and Chris Carson seem like the right picks here. Now, do you want to make a case against Chris Carson, Mike? Before we, it's just the the unknown of if you're drafting right now. He's injured. Is he actually going to be ready for the? I season? feel like we're in the, the the world of unknown here. David Johnson, James Conner. That's why I don't like these running backs. Yeah, but we're we're. <laughs> this is the bed we made. Lay your head down on the you pillow, made Mike. This bed, we did. <laughs> we we did. as a you as get we me collectively. out. You were in. You Julio just got Jones and DJ Moore as a combination of wide receivers is pretty devastating. Yes, and if Chris Carson offers you, look, we might need a little bit more depth at running back. It's, it, that's never a problem. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a problem getting. It's it. always a problem. It's a problem getting it, but it's like never something you don't need. So we're going to be focusing there no matter what. Yeah. Um, Mark Andrews is on the board. At tight end, I don't think it represents the pick that we need in a, no, in a draft or back to back. I love Mark Andrews. I expect him to be great. But if you're telling me that I can get a top flight wide receiver or or running back, which I believe both DJ Moore and Chris Carson are compared to 
what could be a, a very good tight end. I'm, I'm certainly going to stick with the running backs and wide receivers. David Montgomery made it back, Jay. He made oh it back. my Just goodness. like I thought. I thought he might, but it was real close and a real risk. We took Carson. Akers, A.J. Brown, Andrews went next. David Johnson, Lev Bell, Robert Woods at 407. Right now, that's one of the bigger steals of the draft, in my opinion. Calvin Ridley at 409. Connor, Keenan Allen finishing the fourth round. Pay attention to him. And then in the fifth round, Devontae Parker, DJ Chark, Jonathan Taylor at 503. Lockett and Metcalf back to back at 505 and 506. Who went first? Lockett. Chark was the guy I was hoping that would that would somehow come back. But. Yeah. And then Mostert at 508, Ingram, Prescott, and Diggs. So we're sitting here with David Montgomery on the board. That's an auto draft to me. It seems like it's an auto draft to me too, especially with the Carson injury risk. You need running back depth. Carson is an injury risk. Montgomery represents a huge tier break between Montgomery and guys like DeAndre Swift, Sony Michelle, Darius Guys, Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, I mean these. You're not going to get another good running back. No, you you you're telling me that you've got a guy here that's pretty much guaranteed for 250 carries uh, at this point in the draft. That's rare. And while he was definitely a disappointment in his rookie season, we've talked about this this off season. That disappointment as a rookie is what allows him to drop in a draft to here where you actually end up getting value. You know, it's like a post-hype sleeper. Well, and just looking at the players behind him, what is Swift's workload going to be? Hunt, Michelle, Geis, Vaughn, James White. None of those players have the workload guarantee that Montgomery does. Correct. So we're good with him. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then looking at our second pick here, our team, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson, Montgomery at running back, Julio Jones, DJ Moore at wide receiver. I'm pretty happy with that. And... uh Quarterback still on the board, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen. This is the first no. pick of the sixth round. No, thank you to all of those <laughs> quarterbacks. Darren Waller, Evan Ingram. You couldn't have gotten that out quicker. No, in case it's... somebody were to turn the podcast off right in the middle of my sentence and right. think I was going to go no, quarterback. No, 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 no quarterback. No quarterback yeah. here. Um, so, Mike, why don't you talk for a minute about who you're considering at this pick? Uh, <laughs> go through some of the wideouts available. So, right now, the, the name that jumps off the list to me and I think Jason would agree. Terry McLaurin is very interesting here as our first bench player or a uh, platoon of the flex position with David Montgomery. Then you're looking at A.J. Green, not really interested. Jarvis Landry is the, – the upside feels completely gone. Debo is interesting because he at least still carries that upside. Tyler Boyd, just like A.J. Green because of the – the rookie quarterback, I like Joe Burrow a lot, but rookie quarterbacks just historically don't sustain fantasy value for for multiple wide receivers. And at, and at this point, I I want someone who has upside. I need I need someone who represents a ceiling for me right here. So I would narrow it down to guys uh, like Terry McLaurin, Debo, Michael Gallup, and then I'll and I would even allow uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Brown at this point. Yeah, it's interesting because like you talk about the ceiling, and it's still the if game with AJ. But AJ's healthy. AJ Green is healthy, and when mm -hmm. AJ Green plays, he is a better player than all these other players have ever been. But you're gambling on a couple of different things with McLaurin. You're gambling on Dwayne Haskins. Uh, how much better can McLaurin be in that offense this year? With Debo, you you are you know he's a different type of wide receiver, has a lot of upside. Seems like you two are both leaning towards youth versus a hopeful AJ Green draft pick. This is going to be the same type of situation yeah. as last year where you got Green late and you got burnt. Um, yeah, when I look at at any draft list, I I don't see AJ Green. I know you don't, but that it will be to your own detriment potentially. Potentially, sure. Um, yeah, he's, but he's yeah, just doubling down because it it worked, it out, worked very out very well last year. Last year and and a year later, I you know maybe I will feel very foolish, but it is where I'm One at. Would so hope. in a mock draft, if you're you not going to outvote me, whatever. But uh, yeah, he's not the guy. To me. so so we have right now Julio and DJ Moore. It, you can argue whether or not we then need the upside pick or whether we should go consistent. Because I I also I do look at Jarvis Landry here and I say. Here's a guy who pretty much every year of his career has been a top 15 wide receiver in fantasy, and nobody ever wants him. And I can see by both of your guys' reactions, no. you don't want him. Yeah, because that 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 stat did not win me a league. That stat about Jarvis Landry and where he ends up at the end of the year does not provide me consistent 
production. When you look at his consistency charts last year, you grimace and you run. And he know, you've seen enough of him to know what you're not getting. I mean, this is not a team that the passing volume is going to go up this year. This is not a player that's going to give you enough explosive plays to give you a win. I'd much rather go Debo. I mean, the, Debo showed last year over the back half of the year that he can be a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. No more Emmanuel Sanders. He's a, he's one of those sophomores that we talked about at the top of the show. So to me, it, I it, like Debo more than McLaurin, it, but I feel like we have made the picks more than Mike. So my, it's up to it, Mike in my book. The, the, it's funny because the way that I look at this pick, if we're going young upside, great third wide receiver here, there's three guys who are all so similar in Hollywood Brown, Terry McLaurin, and Debo. Three breakout wide receivers last year as rookies. Who, Andy, I know you like Debo the most. I'm a Hollywood guy, and Mike's a Terry McLaurin You don't guy. like Hollywood more than Debo, though. Uh, when, I, when I look, I think Debo is safer, but I think the upside, you know, I I, also, well, I, okay. I do look at the upside we disagree there. with Hollywood as, you know, just I, I would say the, the ceiling, if they both hit peak ceiling, I would go with Hollywood Brown. But, yeah, let's give this pick to Mike, because I, I would be happy with any one of those three guys. This but this would be a situation where I would not expect Hollywood, even though he's clearly furthest down in the ADP. If you're playing that, like, Willie comes Terry's back. higher. Marquise but will I, absolutely make it back. Uh, Stone Cold lot. Put it on the board. Okay, I <laughs> don't know. Like an instant <laughs> <are> water bet? <laughs> instant water bet. Our, water first, bet. our first ever. We're going to know who wins this water bet on this show in about 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, Mike has to make the pick first. If he takes... Uh, if he takes Hollywood right now in order <laughs> to, our, to ruin me and give me water, yes, that owl. would be a problem. Owl, you need to go fill a cup of water yeah, go right get a now. Cup. Oh, are we doing it on the show? Okay. Why not? It's going down your back. It's definitely going down your back. What have okay, you done? That's fine. Or, or Jason's. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. oh, for sure. Yeah, now, wait, right. who's on what side of the back? So I'm, I'm betting that Hollywood will make it back to our next pit. And I'm saying he won't. Mike, All right. Well, I, $10 I, to I, t- <laughs> no, I cannot influence. Are you taking Debo or McLaurin? Uh, I do have... Uh, looking through my projections, I do have Debo a few spots ahead of Terry McLaurin. So I got like I got Debo at twenty three, Terry at twenty seven. This is this is very small difference in ranking. And uh, Terry McLaurin is just my dude, man. So you gonna take he's, him? He's just my dude. I gotta take Terry McLaurin. All right, All right I almost took see. Debo oh. when you gave me your rankings, but uh, it was your pick. Here we go. Oh, let's no. find out. Oh, he's off. Yes. The road. Son of oh, a guy. I've never. <laughs> ever been so happy to have a guy I love go Dang off it. the board. See, when you're in your real drafts and you're worried, you need to make a bet so that either way you're happy. Just go pour it on him. Mind the electronics. Yeah, Al. <laughs> I have a laptop here, so you better watch yourself. This is where you can pause the show. Go to youtube.com slash fantasy football. I'm not looking forward to this. Oh. At all. I mean, this, it's very chilly in this office. Here Stone comes Cold Al. Lock. Yeah, all right. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Water oh, going down. Shit. Oh man, that was a large <laughs> cup. It is still being poured. My butt crack. Oh. All right. So, needless to say, now that I am all wet. Um, <laughs> yes. T- oh my gosh, and it's <laughs> pooling beneath me. Our first ever on-air water payout. Oh my gosh, I don't feel comfortable. Terry McLaurin, uh, we took That's him. That's not good. Just for the record, to you, if you want to know how close it went, uh, some highlights from the rest of the sixth round. He did not go in the sixth round. Debo went three picks later. Kyler Murray off the board at 6.05. I don't hate that. If you are into Kyler Murray in year two with what we saw last year, that's fine. A.J. Green went at 6.06. I am so wet. Uh, DeAndre Swift at 6.12. Wait, he got drafted where? And I've never heard of that player. Uh, that is referring to my back and my booty. Uh, Kareem Hunt. <laughs> Started the seventh round. Hollywood Brown ended up going at seven oh five. Mm. Uh, it looks like seven picks before ours. But this so. is usually the example that I think is good for people who are at the turn to hear. Like for me, I want to take my shot on Hollywood Brown. I want to. Uh, he's the guy I believe in. I believe in obviously the Baltimore offense. That's what I want on my team, and so. You might think, oh, well, can I play the game and wait? Because Hollywood might drop. If you want that guy, you would have to have drafted him higher than he usually goes. So, you know, when you're at the turn, take who you want. All right. So, But but what's interesting about that, just to dig in for a second, is that can be be really difficult on tier-based drafting and on your rankings because you love Hollywood. You Mm -hmm. don't want to miss a chance at Hollywood. 
he's probably not ranked anywhere close to where we should have taken him there. Right. So it is a temptation. Mostly because my ranking is very low. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it's a temptation to be like, you end up selecting your guy before maybe... You know, but the, uh, which that's is, what which I rec- is okay. I definitely recommend you doing that. Like the ultimate draft kit, it if you're using the app version, it gives you that ability where you can highlight a player. You go in, you can see where we have guys ranked, but go in, go in, tag players, make star yeah, them, make your make your decision, pick your guys as well. Yeah, and 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 I will say this with reference to what what you're saying when you're picking your sixth player. It's a lot easier and I think uh, yes. more appropriate to take a shot on the guys that you want ahead of their ADP than sure. it is when you're, you know, on your t- two, three turn and you're like, oh man, but I really want this guy. And, you know, usually the top of those drafts, they're, they're over the last several years, they're more accurate than not. I mean, no, nobody knows the, the busts and the injuries and those type of things. But if you look at fantasy value per player, per pick, you know, through the draft, the top is fantasy point heavy for a reason. All right, we are in the uh, last pick of the seventh round, first pick of the eighth round. Lay out our team now. Josh Jacobs and Chris Carson, and David mm. Montgomery. I like it. At running back, Julio Jones, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin at wide receiver. I like it. We're and, balanced. Uh, we're on the board here. A number of quarterbacks. The quarterback run happened right after our pick. Oh, nice. Kyler, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen, and Matt Ryan all went. So Drew Brees still on the board. Tom Brady, Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers. Stafford, oh. Roethlisberger. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably where the list ends for me in terms of wanting them as my I would agree. locked-in starter. Uh, wide receivers available, Marvin Jones. Uh, he Mis- loves Mr. being Value. available late. Uh, you have, I mean, he's he's a player that kind of jumps off the board here. Christian Kirk, John Brown, Jamison Crowder. Deontay Johnson, if you want to buy into some upside with Big Ben coming back. Johnson, I think, you know, with where Juju went in the third round, you're looking at the eighth round for Deontay Johnson. And I think both players have an opportunity to bounce back in an offense that will throw the ball much better than they did last year. I would, I would also throw out at this point in the draft, you know, th- this is where Jerry Judy. I, I was going to throw out uh, CD Lamb, Jared Cook. Jared Cook is, uh, you know, a guy who I I know he's not a heavy target volume uh, tight end, but we're not going to really find a locked and loaded heavy target volume guy. At this point in the draft, you're looking for upside, which usually does come with touchdowns. And Jared Cook is someone I would look at here, unless you have a strong belief in, say, like a Hayden Hurst. If you if you've got that guy that you are like, I believe Hayden Hurst. And and I'll say this: if if you looked at the the ultimate draft kit rankings and the changes that have happened, I recently went in based on more information and and looked deeper at. Um, the splits with Austin Hooper last year and Calvin Ridley. I ended up bumping Ridley down and hmm. Hayden Hurst up a little bit. So I am rising on Hayden Hurst. If you want to pick a guy like that, let's say you totally are in on John U. Smith. Well, if you've got guys like that, then definitely don't take a Jared Cook here. But I do think he represents uh, a higher tier, a more known commodity at this point in the draft than all those other um, late round tight end dart throws. So wh- where do you guys stand on whether you would Man. want... I don't have any problem with Jared Cook here because of our team's makeup. All of our players have guaranteed opportunities. All of our players are the, uh, you know, we didn't draft the Clyde Edwards-Alaire, that we have to wait to see them develop over a partial part of the season. So drafting Jared Cook and getting a tier difference at tight end, if that's what you believe, which I haven't ranked that way, I don't have any problem with it. You know, I didn't mention the running backs on the board. You know, Jordan Howard's on the board. uh, And then you take some of the gambles, the J.K. Dobbins or... Uh, Philip Lindsay. I mean, it's not a comfortable place for uh, Marlon Mack is still on the board. There's a bunch of backup running yeah. backs on the yeah. board and Sony Michelle. There's, so I could go Jared Cook, Marvin right. Jones. I could go Jared Cook, Jordan Howard. That would uh, be the two votes that I have. I am fine t- drafting Jared Cook, but I will say this. I think I'm out, man. On Cook? I think I'm out on Jared Cook. I have him as my tight end 10. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. On Jared Cook, maybe he can repeat the absolute insane touchdown numbers, but just it it's it reminds me of Eric Ebron's season from a couple years ago, and I was staunchly out on Ebron going into the next year. Yeah, forty three receptions last year for Jared Cook. Right. I mean, and he can do it again just because of of the team. I'm more confident in Drew Brees throwing accurate touchdown passes to 
to Jared Cook, but I'm more in on taking my shot at this point. More in on taking my shot on one of the like a Gasicki. Uh, like or... my, for me, for me, Mike Gasicki, Blake Jarwin, Hayden Hurst, Chris Herndon. No offense. No offense. Like I'm, I'm just at this point. If it were, if I were running right, this team, I would just completely bypass it. Let's bypass the tight end and end up with one of those guys because there's, there's, there's plenty sure, of people there. Sure. Um, and we can stock up on wide receiver. I would, and, I would take Deontay Johnson. I would take Deontay Johnson. Yeah. I mean, he has the, of all the players that we're talking about, he has the best opportunity, I think, to take a tier jump at this stage in the draft. You're not going to get that from Christian Kirk with DeAndre Hopkins coming in the door. You're not going to get that with John Brown, with Stephon Diggs coming in the door. And you're not going to get that with Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones which, is a, is a better value, but does not have the same potential to really take it up a notch and be a home run pick. So this is like, are you getting depth or are you getting? Uh, and you could take both. You could go star. Deontay and Marvin Jones. I don't think we can. The one player that I don't think we can bypass here, Ronald Jones the second. I could throw up if <laughs> I would allow myself to listen to the words you just said. Um, but instead. No, Jordan Howard, to me, he's the last starting running back. He's always been good for fantasy. He's, you know, he's going to, he's another one of those guys. It's probably a, a 250 carry player. I got no problem with it, Jason. Jordan Howard off the board, Deontay Johnson off the board. Got a couple bench spots left. Need a tight end, need a quarterback, need an illustrious defense. Now we're sitting here, the last pick of the ninth round. Some names I'll just highlight between the eighth and ninth round after we picked. Sonny Michelle. Off the board in the eighth round. Somewhat interesting if he is the starter to go sure. in the eighth round. Henry Ruggs off the board. First wide receiver drafted. Eighth pick of the eighth round. Uh, Sterling Shepard at 8-11. Probably a value there in the same way that Marvin Jones is. Damian Williams at 9-04. Six rounds after Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Anthony Miller at 9-06. Okay. Aaron Rodgers finally off the board. It's our pick. Last pick of the ninth round. And here is Drew Brees. Oh, my goodness. It's so great. And I, I was going to point this out. At, at the at, you know you were talking about the quarterback run last round. Well, when there's a run on a onesie position, a position you know, tight ends or quarterbacks, and there's this huge run, you don't need to feel like you have to get in on it right away or at the end because what happens is everyone now has their quarterback, and so the next round nobody is drafting quarterbacks. So we waited on a turn. There was two and a half rounds without a quarterback drafted after exactly after the run. So to me, Drew Brees here uh, would be a great, uh, a great pick. I'm very high on Drew Brees this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine moving forward with him at the quarterback. I mean, you're you're getting to the point of the draft where the, I think the value ha is really there. And uh, we have two picks, and Jared Cook's still on the board. So yeah. I think at this point, over overruled, you get Mike. a stack. I'm I'm fine at this point. Tenth him. round pick, Jared Cook, and you get the stack with Brees and Cook. Oh, and, man. Yeah, nine, that's exciting ten, to have. A 9-10 yeah. stack with Breeze and Cook with this kind of balanced team. I am loving this team. Yeah, they, I, don't, they don't always I work out. I love drafting but, from the 12 spot. But they, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew Breeze at quarterback, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson, David Montgomery, Jordan Howard at running back. I love that four-pack because I feel like you, no matter what happens – and we just talked about the COVID th thing at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You might need a little bit more depth, and those guys all have guaranteed roles. At wide receiver, Julio Jones, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, and Deontay Johnson. Der uh, Jared Cook is our tight end. And we are into the 11th round. couple of spots left. Carry on Johnson went in the 10th round. Jason, too late for you? I I plead the fifth. I mean, I don't. I, I can't talk about. Carry I know. On. I know. Mike Gesicki, tenth <laughs> round pick. Tom Brady, tenth round pick. Oh, eleventh uh, round highlights. Not a lot of them. I mean, Alexander Madison off the board at eleven oh two. Maybe somebody we could have thought about earlier with the Cook situation. Depending on whether you think he'll get something done, you hate to waste too high of a pick on Madison if the, if a deal gets done. And at this point in the off season, we're we're still very we're still early. pretty early. Uh, Hayden Hurst at eleven eleven, so we would not have got him with the next pick if we had passed on tight end. So here we are. We've got some rookies on the board. We've got Jalen Rager still available. That seems like a great dart throw at this point in the draft. We've got uh Robbie Anderson still sitting there. We've got Nikhil Harry, Michael Pittman Jr., a rookie I love. And then at running back, you've got Chase Edmonds, Justin Jackson. You're in the backup zone here. Justin Jackson is. He's pretty interesting. He is interesting. I, he was getting some some pub the other day where I I agree with Jason that Austin Eckler is not going to get everything. No. 
And if there is a split that looks similar to what they have used in the past, the, talking about the Chargers, but Austin Eckler is getting Melvin Gordon's workload and Justin Jackson gets the old Austin Eckler workload, he's going to have value because both of those players had, had fantasy value at the same time. Sammy Watkins also on the board? <laughs> So what do we think? No, it was, okay. was a moment of silence oh, for uh, okay. cons- for Andy considering. Yeah, not going to happen. Sammy Watkins there. Uh, the, the funny thing is, is I've had. I mean, like the Fantasy Cares Charity Eliminator that we're a part of right now. Mm-hmm. I have Sammy Watkins. I have him too. I yeah. got him in like the the twelfth, eleventh, or twelfth round or well, something. That's and, yeah, I got him extremely late. I mean, when you're talking about best ball, you don't have to predict which week Pat Mahomes throws the eighty. Yeah, you get bomb. Sammy's one week. Yep. Exactly. And, that, and it was a really good week. Yeah. So um, I got him in the 10th round, Mike. That's where I got that's, him. That's good. Yeah, right. so so with our with our team. Hunter Renfro is there, somebody that uh, has some upside. Yeah, if this was full PPR, I'd, I'd be a little bit more excited. Um, so I, I want to go back. Justin Jackson, you guys seem like that was kind of interesting. He's too. interesting. With our team makeup. I mean, Justin Jackson might end up with more of a role than we expect, but obviously not the whole role for a you know a team that's offense is eh, okay. I wonder because we have four solid running backs if it would be better to take if we're going running back to take a shot on someone like a Chase Edmonds who, if thrust into that role, you know we talked about the COVID. We don't usually draft handcuffs. I don't think I, I think I'd go two wide receivers here. Sure, I, I don't, I don't, I, I would not blame us for. I think I go Jalen Rager for sure. He'd be locked in because he may start from day one. And when you talk about the very end of your bench, if you can grab that guy, that you'll you'll kind of be able to make a determination on. You're going to be dropping somebody for waivers. Alshon might not be ready for week one. So if I if Jalen very... Rager is a starter week one and mm-hmm. Alshon isn't out there, that's that rookie situation where like him and Jerry Judy, they could start the year. With high target volume, and which Judy is rare. Went, Judy did go in the tenth round, just for yes, those following at home. I'm going to take Jalen Rager, and then I'll let you guys decide on the last pick here because I think Rager's just an upside opportunity there. There's no guarantee. Deontay Johnson pops, so Rager's just another dart throw. Uh, all right. So where do, where do you go with this final bench pick? Uh, so let me let me ask you this, Mike. We're yeah. right now. We are we're looking for upside, right? We I think we've. We've got a solid team. Do you go Carlos right. Hyde in case uh, your no. Chris Carson's not ready? No, I do not. No, because uh, you wouldn't start him that's, over. Yeah, the that's other not guys. chasing yeah. the upside. So we've we've got a solid team. We've got depth at running back, at wide receiver. We've got uh, you know a, a solid team. You did not like Jared Cook. You're out on him this year. No fan is still there. Is this the rare so situation where you would? You know, there, no, no, there is not. Okay, I this was, is not where I'm. I'm doubling up on the tight end. Yeah, because I don't usually draft two tight ends. But if Fant were to have the breakout, you'd have him ready to go. That that's where I was just curious. If no. you are out on Cook, I I know who I would take. In it's uh, it's the final bench spot. I have absolutely nothing to lose with this pick, and he's one of my favorite players from the draft. You know who I'm talking I, about. I think I do, and it's crazy. It, it it's a little look. I don't think it's that crazy, I honestly. Think it's insane if it's who I think it is. It's Antonio Gibson yeah, it's from Washington. It, it it I don't think it's that crazy at all. The, the situation is perfect. He he. What's crazy is right now he's not the starter. Like it's Darius Geis is the starting running back. Adrian Peterson. Uh, I don't know. Is he going to be on the roster? But Antonio Gibson was selected by this regime. That's fair. You have you already have the comps to uh, you you have to you have to like Voldemort you have to whisper it but he already got a comp from from Ron Rivera to Christian McCaffrey uh, and then you also have something also very interesting that Scott Turner is the offensive coordinator oh that's fair that is son of Norv Turner that is son of the offensive coordinator who uses one running back when he can. And if somehow week one hits and Antonio Gibson is the starting running back, then you have you have dodged the waiver wire bullet. You are you are you are locked and loaded. Or I, you just you I don't think Adrian on. Peterson makes the roster. I, I even I, easier I've than cha- for Gibson I've changed to be my the starter. opinion there because I don't think there becomes a point where Adrian Peterson the the value versus kind of sometimes the locker room distraction at this stage of his career. We saw it in New Orleans. We saw it at times last year where he's ticked off not getting on the field. If this team is building for the future, Adrian Peterson does not, and they have the depth behind him, whether it's Bryce Love and Geis comes back and you've got Gibson. 
I think at some Peyton point Barber. Yeah, and Peyton Barber, they signed. No, <laughs> they, they absolutely. Sign him. Why I know, not? They why did. not have Peyton Barber well, play that Adrian Peterson role and just move on from Peterson? Bryce yeah. Love, I mean, and I think like honestly, I am still so soaking wet. It's not even funny. <laughs> the, 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 I'm the, molding. What's funny enough is the one player that I have to kind of shrug off is is J D McKissick, who is he is a pass catching running back, which Antonio Gibson specializes in. I I totally agree with you that if Gibson comes in week one and is a starter. That's going to be an incredible um, steal here. I guess my issue why I say it's insane is because there's like 500 running backs there, and while that means none of that's, them are, that's where you get, that's where you find fantasy gold, man. Maybe, maybe, but I I think the odds of him starting week one are well, he'll probably be the low. waiver wire drop. But Mike's taking a shot here with yep, the sure. last pick. So our team, Drew Brees, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson, Julio Jones, DJ Moore, Jared Cook. Right now, a flex of David Montgomery. I grabbed the Chiefs defense with our final pick. I'm okay. fine with that. I did such a good job on that pick. And the final thing, because I'm not just going to keep harping on it, but if Antonio Gibson hits week one, you, that you're talking about a 60 to 70% fab player that everyone will go out and they will throw all the money. If if one of these wide receivers hits, what's it, 20-something 20, sure. 20 dollars? Like I'll, I'll take that. Ins insurance is the wrong word, but I'll, I'll take the shot on the player that if they hit, they're going to cost way more after week one. Uh, yeah, you're not, you're not doing no scratcher. This is Powerball. <laughs> yes. You're going, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. McLaurin, Deontay Johnson, Jordan Howard, Jalen Rager, and Antonio Gibson is our bench. While... We had the discussion early on of going running back, running back versus getting Julio Jones. I don't really have regrets with that pick because we did, you know, Montgomery dropped to us. Yes. That we, we were handed a present. It yes. changed the equation a little bit on the Carson pick where, you know, if we can get Julio Jones and, you know, Carson and Montgomery in, in a, you know, running yes, back depth situation, things. it's nice. So. All right, let us know what you think of the draft. Head to Twitter at the FF Ballers or wherever you're following us. Let us know what uh, huge mistakes we made. Uh, <laughs> but that was that was pretty fun. Did you time. realize? I don't know if we didn't. We you know we made that last pick kind of quick. Had the debate, but I Rodney Anderson was available, so he was. Yeah, I, oh, I, I'm not surprised. He was? Yeah, I just look for your sake. I assumed he had gone like in the ninth. Right. Um, I think he would have been available. It, in like 20 more rounds. Well, I haven't. Well. <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't researched what other fourth to fifth string players that might get cut I would have taken over him, but yeah. I'll take a look. Okay. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction once again for sponsoring today's show. Josh Jacobs signed jersey yesterday, $85. Our first round. Oh, second round draft pick. Sorry. Julio got the first yes, round. That's right. Yeah. Josh Jacobs in the second round. $85 at pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS, Ballers. and you get $10 towards a sports memorabilia purchase that'll do it that will do it all right stay safe out there everybody yes we'll be with you thursday i think we're doing is it a breakout show it judge is a breakout. oh show. yeah okay we'll see you next time Have a good time goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget Omaha Steaks has a limited time Father's Day offer for all of you. This Father's Day, send dad the gift that he really wants. Go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar and save 55%. When you, oh, there it is. <laughs> when you send the summer sizzle pack for $79.99 and get a free steak cut bacon with your order.